So why should you retire in the Philippines? Um, I know I talk about a lot of the negative aspects quite a lot in the Philippines, but it's basically just for advice um, because a lot of people are sunny side up anyway, which is where they leave themselves um, open for things to go wrong. Where I'm more on the side of pre-planning, organizing, blah, blah, blah. Which is why I quite happily share the advice because I know where it's gone wrong for other people, which is why I put it out there in the first place. But what are the positive things about living in the Philippines for retirement? Well, the first thing is, I would say, a lot of guys' health improves um, because they have access to a lot of fruit and other bits and pieces they wouldn't normally eat. What they don't have access to is TV dinners, microwave meals, and the things that you may generally use on a regular basis, but you're going to have to get used to living without them. But that's why you end up a little bit healthier. The downsides on that are obviously alcohol, um, because a lot of expats do entertain alcohol on a daily basis instead of a week or a monthly. Um, so, yeah, cheap alcohol is one of the upsides, but also be aware that the downside is alcohol abuse. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you can get bottles of brandy for like uh, the equivalent of a dollar. You can get uh, tequila, it's very cheap, uh, even some good tequila, um, brandy, rum, beer. Um, it's all, you know, it's all fairly cheap, especially if you compare it to some of the places other people are coming from. Um, for example, the UK is very expensive for alcohol, but I'm sat in Spain where it's cheap. So it's, it's one of those things, you know, um, it all depends where you're coming from. Healthcare wise, one of the things you can do is get a living person to assist you and you could probably get a nurse for about 6,000 pesos or you can get somebody that is training to be a nurse um, that are live in because they want somebody to sponsor their training so you can get healthcare quite cheap if you know how to um, manipulate life. <laughs> um, downsides on that is you will need medical insurance. Um, you need to research that yourself. I'm going to do some further research myself, but I need to speak to some of the insurance companies because I want to see what they offer and what guarantees they offer. Um, because some of the insurance in the Philippines want you to pay up front and then they reimburse you, which is okay if you've uh, stubbed your toe, but a little bit more serious when you've got to go for surgery, um, when you're having to pay, um, say, 100,000 pesos and then have to wait for them to pay you. Um, I'd much rather just go, here's my insurance card, you sort it out, I just want the health cover, cover. boom, done. Um, so I'm looking into that, but the healthcare varies in the Philippines depending on budget. There's some really bad healthcare, um, which can occur in some of the free hospitals. Um, there's some fantastic healthcare, um, which will cost you a small fortune, but at the same time, it's like anywhere on the planet, you have good and bad, you know, depending on how much you're spending. Um, that's why I always advise on insurance, because it, the bad healthcare is the difference between having an arm or a leg, um, because it's cheap to cut it off, it's expensive to save it with all the, um, what do you call it, the Oh, you know when they try and get you to learn to walk again and all that sort of stuff. So you, this is the sort of thing you're looking at. That's why it's important for healthcare. Meeting people is very, very easy. It may not be as easy where you are currently. Um, so having people to talk to on a daily basis is one of the good things about retirement in the Philippines. Finding a partner. It's extremely easy. Finding a good partner is a little bit harder, but finding a partner is very, very easy. Um, so, because I know a lot of you guys either divorced, had outlived your partner, whatever. Um, finding a Philippine partner is one of the main upsides and one of the big reasons people go to the Philippines in the first place. Cost of rent relatively cheap and varies on depending on how much you want to spend. 
um, you want to go into a subdivision and all the other bits and pieces, you'll pay a lot more than if you're living in the community. Um, the reason I split that a subdivision, which is a walled community away from their community, is the fact they put a wall up, which means they're no longer part of the bigger community, they're part of a smaller secure community. They, they often have armed guards, etc. Um, but the plus sides of being in the community, you'll find that you get on with the neighbours, you'll find there's quite a strong community spirit. Um, downsides things like video key and things like that, but it's dirty, there's just to presency is actually going to be dealing with a lot of the um, irritances that go on within communities, which are, should actually benefit everybody overall. Um, just means that you can't have video key at 3 a.m. on your birthday. Um, so th there's that downside that if you want a video key. Um, Finding things to fill your time. It's there, but I find a lot of expats don't do it. First thing I want to say is you can get involved with the schools. The local schools love to have foreigners involved in stuff they're getting up to. Um, I'm actually a beneficiary of the, the central school in England, Uh You can also get involved in charity projects and even start your own charity projects. There's a lot of people always interested in doing stuff with you, especially if you're buying dinner. So there is a lot of stuff that you can keep yourself occupied with. Also, you don't have the same hassles you get in the West where people will go, oh, have you got the right paperwork for that? Generally, nobody bothers you in the Philippines as long as it's not making a small fortune. Um, opening a small business with your partner. The reason I say with your partner, because you can own it, uh, your partner can. Um, it's generally pretty easy in the Philippines. It's much harder to close a business than it is to open one. Uh, the paperwork is a pain to actually shut down. Um, but you can open a small corner shop, you can open a internet cab, whatever, quite easily in the Philippines. And I know somebody was saying about the deterrents affecting their business already with the uh, new changes that are going on in the Philippines. But I would say that over time, things will become more organized, which means a lot of the things that may be affecting people short term, um, long term, wouldn't have no adverse effect. Um, food is relatively cheap for eating out. I, you know, depending on what you want to spend. Because you have um, street vendors that cook stuff at the side of the street, they're very, very cheap. But then you can go all the way up to more expensive restaurants, you know, a good steakhouse and stuff where you're spending the same as you would in the West or even more sometimes. There's quite an array. In Cebu, there's over a thousand restaurants, so you've got a broad mix of food available to you. The Philippines generally welcomes foreigners. It doesn't like being told it's doing things wrong. Um, it already knows it, that's what I can say. <laughs> it already knows half the problem and the other half it creates. So it doesn't need foreigners telling it every day that, oh, this is crap. They know it. They know the internet's unreliable. They know there's a elitist society that exists that controls everything. Um, they know there's a lot of corruption, etc. They already know. So what I'm saying is you're a foreigner. Just take it as these aren't your problems. Yes, you're affected by crap internet and everything else. But it's like when the internet, uh, my call center, when we had brownouts, complete power cuts, etc. All we did was just go and sit under the mango tree and open some beer, just chill out. Don't let things bug you. But at the end of the day, you ain't going to fix it. So just don't get involved in it. Uh, public transport's very good in the Philippines. Uh, you can get anywhere. There's all there's lots of different types. You can get your taxi and you get your V hire, which will run you from one end of the island to another. You got the um, uh, the buses that vary depending where what routes they're on. You've got the little jeepneys, you've got the um, tricycles, the pedal cabs. There is transportation for everything, and it's relatively cheap. Um, so getting around is not an issue. Um, places to live are not an issue. There's always loads of places for rent. Uh, places to eat aren't an issue. Medical care is not an issue. 
Um, security wise I would say I feel safer in the Philippines than I do in Worcester uh, Worcester in the UK um, in Worcester in the UK I've, there's been people set on fire there's been people stabbed over stupid things um, people that have a general there's, a, there's people that go out on a Friday night want to get drunk and just want to attack each other stupid people I've never experienced any of that in the Philippines. You will get the tin gods, which are um, the mayor's sons or whatever. They've been like mothers, like horrible little brats from childhood. Um, they can be a pain, but you don't see them very often. That's the key to it. You're not seeing them every day. So you don't have that problem. In the Philippines, I've walked around at 2, 3 in the morning. Nobody is bothering me. Nobody's trying to rob me. Nobody's trying to hassle me. I go even in the market areas, which if you say to a lot of Filipinos, you go in the market area, you know, they won't go there. They see it's very dangerous, but I have no issues with there at all because I sit and have a drink with the guys there. Nobody's bug bug bugging you. Um, everyone's friendly. A lot of the threats and problems people have in the Philippines are self-inflicted. Um due to not taking advice, due to not having the ability to adapt to a new society, or being angry and aggressive to the local population. The rest is hard luck. You know, you may get the odd 5% of scenarios, but it's how you handle the situation that makes a difference. If you've got a Filipino drunk and screaming at you or whatever, get another Filipino to defuse it. Don't don't go in there and the drunk already. You don't know if they've got a pistol stuck in their trousers, a knife, or they're there with ten friends that are also in a similar state that quite happily beat up the foreigner. Um, you'll find that bar staff or whatever will try and deal with it for you if you're in a um, a small restaurant or a um, local type bar. I say local type bar, I'm not talking about a bikini bar, I'm talking about a bar bar, just for drinking. Um, but they will try and diffuse it for you, or they'll say, oh, they'll go home in five minutes, they like it every week. But you do not, try not to get into confrontation with people. Um, Filipinos are very funny with confrontation, because they have two types of reaction normally. One, they sort of shy away and got in the back of the mind that you've embarrassed them or they go full blown and may do something stupid either way it's just not worth it um, it's better to just sidestep it and it's not being a uh, coward or anything like that it's called being diplomatic a lot of these problems are not your problems in the first place most of the issues I've seen with people having serious things go wrong were involved in things that had nothing to do with them whatsoever um, it's just not your problem. Just treat it as a guest in someone else's house. If you were in somebody else's house and two cousins was they are related to a friend of yours and you're visiting this house and they're fighting, your friend will deal with it. It's not for you to deal with. This is a family house. They, they deal with their own issues. That's the same way they look at the Philippines in many ways. It's quite simply, it's a family house. You know, they're fighting, all right, leave them to it. It's nothing to do with me, move on. Uh, I'm going home early, I'll leave you guys to it. Don't get wrapped into it. And I know most of you guys are smart enough to know this, but it's where these issues occur for a lot of people. They get involved in things they don't need to. Um, I think that's the key things here. You will be happier. You yeah, guarantee it. You first thing you've got is the sunshine every day. You've got... Um, a lot of beauty once you get out of the cities. Um, you've got a access to the beaches, etc. You've got access to diving and lots of other things. Get yourself a motorbike if you've ever ridden a motorbike before. Um, get yourself out and about. Do stuff. One thing I will say: do not vegetate. Do not move into a subdivision or whatever and just sit there. That's where these keyboard warriors come from. That sit whining on the internet all day long. You want to be out there doing something. Even if you're sat at home doing something, as long as it's constructive, it benefits you, it benefits the people around you, it benefits everybody. Um, but I will say try and get out. 
uh, don't feel scared of Filipinos. Filipinos are generally welcoming, and you'll find a lot of the time they will look after you. You know, if you go to the local shop and you think, oh, I'm going to go down there tonight, today, or you may actually get the person at the local shop saying, no, 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 don't go there. Don't, it's not very good for you. Or they might say, oh, uh, my brother's going there. Uh, my brother can take you. He's not asking for money. They're not asking for money. What they're doing is looking after your well being. They're concerned about you going somewhere. So they'll say, I'll send somebody with you so you're not on your own. Being part of a community in the Philippines involves that you're not they're sat on your own there's always somebody there's always somebody your neighbors whatever um just be yourself but keep things private that need to be private you know nobody needs to know how much money you make every month nobody needs to know um things about your background or anything like that unless it's you know you're talking about engineering or something um generally there's no need to bring in bits and pieces that could be a potential risk you know if you're saying well my family are rich back in Miami or whatever you're you're creating a potential risk there um, because it's none of their business they may ask you well are your family rich you just say no you know, you know it's nobody's business and that's all I can say I, you know I'm sure you'll love the Philippines but I said, when it goes wrong, it's normally connected with other bits and pieces. But nobody tells you the full story. This is the thing. A lot of stuff I talk about is because I've spoken to the different people. Somebody says, this has happened to them. And then I speak to three other people, and I speak to two people that are involved, and I speak to the local policemen or whatever, and then I get the full picture. But the version they told me is nine times out of ten, not the truth. Because they don't want to admit they did something or whatever that actually started the problem in the first place. Um, okay, sometimes you get it wrong with the, the wrong partner or stuff, but often that is even a ongoing scenario where the issue is being created over a period of time. I know a guy that calls his wife stupid right in front of her, um, and when she got her opportunity to take him to the cleaners, she did do. Those are the things you could be aware of, and it's common sense. Thanks for watching.